Hey everyone, it's Kroeke and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a 2022 Toyota Supra A91 CF Edition. I'm very, very excited to be reviewing this car as it's one of the only 600 of these to ever be made. This is Toyota's third special edition Supra that they've made. So today we're going to be going over this model. We're going to talk about some of its uh, differences between a regular Supra. We're going to go over the exterior, interior, and some more details. Let's get started. So like I mentioned, this is Toyota's third special edition Supra. In 2020, they released the launch edition Supra, which was limited to only 1,500 units. In 2021, they released the A91 Supra, which was limited to 919 units. And now this 2022 A91 CF Edition Supra is limited to just 600 units. Now back in 2020, when Toyota released the Launch Edition Supra, uh, the big differentiating factor between that and the regular Supra was that that one had the gloss red mirrors. That one came in either red, white, or black, and each of them was actually numbered on the dash and signed by Akio Toyota. Then in 2021, we had the A91 edition, which came in either refraction blue or nocturnal black. That one was limited to 919 units, and the main differentiating factor between that obviously was that refraction color, which is by far my favorite Toyota Super color that they've made so far. Also, they had these two kind of racing stripes along the rear quarter panel, and they had a carbon fiber duckbill type spoiler. And now for this third special edition 2022 A91 CF, this one is all about carbon fiber. They've only made 600 of these. These are available in either nitro yellow, absolute zero, which is the white color, or this color right here, which is phantom. Uh, this is a paint that looks almost like a matte gray. If we come up close to it, you can see it doesn't really have that same gloss that some of the other paints have. It's more of a metallic finish. And the A91 CF Super is all about the carbon fiber. So you can see right over here on the front splitters, we have carbon fiber all along the front same goes for the other side right here we also have these carbon fiber side skirts along the side right here so carbon fiber all along the sides in the rear we also have these car nerds right here more carbon fiber in the back and we also have this same duckbill type spoiler up at the top with the carbon fiber material Another thing that differentiates the special edition Supras from the regular ones is that they all have these 19 inch black machine finished wheels and every special edition Toyota Supra also has their own unique interior. So in 2020, we had the cockpit red. It had the red seats with the white stitching. The steering wheel was black and red. In 2021, we had uh, the Alcantara seats with the blue stitching on the steering wheel, blue stitching on the seats. Uh, that one, uh, again, probably my favorite. I really love that uh, refraction blue 2021. And now for 2022, we kind of have a similar interior to what we had in 2020, although these seats right here are not fully red. These seats right here do have this red and white stitching along the seat. We do still have the Alcantara in the middle. However, the middle portion of the seat is now black as opposed to red. Now the center console in this car is still that same cockpit red. The steering wheel is also the same one that we had in 2020, so we have that black and red look to it. And actually one very interesting thing about this interior color, somebody pointed this out to me, is that the red right here on the driver's door card is only there on the driver's side. If we move over to the passenger side, you can see that there is no red on that door card. Let's go ahead and talk about the performance of this Supra right here. So this right here is BMW's B58 engine. It's a straight six, three liter engine that makes about 382 horsepower, 368 pound feet of torque. The Supra pulls 0 to 60 in 3.9 seconds, and it's got an 8-speed automatic transmission as its only option. The 6-speed manual is highly requested, but Toyota hasn't given it to us yet. Hopefully next year for the 2023 model, uh, Toyota will give us that 6-speed manual transmission that a lot of us have been hoping for in this car. Continuing on with the performance of the Supra, it is rear-wheel drive, has launch control. Up in the front over here, we also have these four piston Brembo brakes, which say Toyota Supra on them. And it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but we have McPherson front struts. For tires, these are Michelin Pilot Super Sports. In the front, we have 255 width, and in the rear, we have 275 width. So we have a wider tire in the back to give the car a little bit more grip. 
Let's go ahead and talk about some options here. So you can see we have GR Supra A91CF Edition. This car starts at $63,280. And this one here does have the driver assist package, which is gonna give us the dynamic radar cruise control. You can see by the little triangle right here on the mirror, we have blind spot monitors. We also have parking sensors with emergency braking function on this car. Now let's just go over the entire exterior of this car before we hop inside and talk about some of its interior features. Starting off right here with this gas cap, it's pretty common for BMWs to do this, to have the touch to open. It's not on most Toyotas, so I am gonna show that it is just a touch to open gas cap right here. Uh, everything in this car is very BMW-like. Because the engine and a lot of the components are made by BMW, this car does feel a lot like a BMW, and you're gonna see that when we step inside the car. Up at the very top on the roof of the car, you can see that there is a dip right here on the roof. This kind of really reminds me of the old BMW Z4 Coupe uh, that they had between 2003 and 2009. Although this car is not actually designed after the BMW Z4, it still has some elements of the Z4 that I can see, like that little dip in the roof line. This Super is actually based off of the 2014 Toyota FT1, the future Toyota concept. I'll put up a picture of what that looks like right now. That is actually where the design of this new fifth generation Supra comes from. Moving on to the rear here, you can see what these tail lights look like when they're lit up at night. Just below where the tail light is, we have the GR logo. GR again stands for Gazoo Racing, which is the division of Toyota that makes some of these cool cars like the GR86, GR Yaris, GR Corolla to be in the future, and this GR Supra. In the rear here, you can see we have a dual exhaust setup. So we have one exhaust tip on each side. And between the exhaust tips right here in the middle, you can see this sort of grid-like pattern. This right here is actually the reverse light. So when we put the car in reverse, this area right here is gonna light up white. Just above all this, we have the old school Toyota Supra logo printed just below the Toyota emblem. And just like we talked about earlier, we have that carbon fiber duckbill type spoiler right over here. Now the Supra has been heavily criticized for its fake vents. This car is full of them. You can see back here, we have a fake vent. Along the door right here, we also have a fake vent all along the hood as well. There's fake vents all over the place. Even over here in the front by the headlight, we have more fake vents. I actually do not mind the fake vents so much. I think it makes the car look a little bit nicer. However, I understand the frustration and why people are mad at Toyota for not making these functional. And I gotta say, since we're right here next to this fake vent on the driver's door, this is probably my favorite part of the Supra. The rear quarter panel right here, the way that it kind of sticks out a little bit from the trunk. All right, and moving up to the front here, you can see what these headlights look like. They have a really long daytime running light right here that just kind of runs through the entire headlight. And then we have this kind of triple beam setup right here for the actual headlight. Also right here in the front, you can see we have some more parking sensors. There were also some, a couple of parking sensors in the rear. And we actually have some real vents right here underneath the headlights to cool down the car. One thing about the design right here in the front of the Supra is that the hood of the car actually goes all the way down almost to the wheel. So if we pop open the hood, this entire huge area is gonna open up, which kind of reminds me of the BMW Z3. Now again, now again, this car was not designed after a BMW. It is designed after the FT1. However, I can still see some BMW elements in here. Let's go ahead and hop into the trunk of the Toyota Supra. And this is actually where we have uh, one of my biggest gripes with this car. And that is that there is no trunk release on the exterior. So you can see down here, there's gonna be no handle, nothing to push to actually open up the trunk. And I feel like Toyota and BMW really dropped the ball on this one because on a lot of BMWs, you can actually push the logo in and then open up the trunk. I feel like this was sort of a missed opportunity to do that. If they didn't wanna add a button to keep this same styling, I feel like they could have done that thing where you push the emblem back and actually open up the trunk. So there's two ways to open up this trunk. The first is gonna to be to press on the keys. You can actually also see right here, this is what the keys look like. It looks like every modern BMW now, they have this design right here. However, we do have a Toyota logo in the back. So you can go ahead and push onto this trunk button right here. That's gonna unlock the trunk and then we can actually pull up right here to access it. Now this is a very, very narrow trunk, but it's actually a little bit bigger than I would expect for a sports car of this size. So you can see once we actually get into the trunk, there's a little bit of extra room right here on the sides, but you wouldn't really expect this much trunk space from a car like this. And the trunk does open way up like this. It is a hatchback style. So you can see we can actually see into the interior right here when the latch is open. And even underneath, you can see that there's a pass-through into the interior from the trunk. 
Now closing the trunk, we have two options. There's kind of like these little handles right here. So you can either pull down from the right side or pull down from the left side and that'll close the trunk there. And then just, just right here under the speaker of the driver's door card, we have a little trunk button. Push that and that's gonna unlock and unlatch this trunk, which then you can pull up manually. And now before we get in, we have this silver plaque right here that says Toyota Super on it. Then let's talk about the door card right here. You can see we have the JBL speakers, which is actually kind of surprising. Now this interior resembles a lot of a modern BMW. However, for the speakers, we've still gone with Toyota's premium audio choice, which is JBL. If this was a um, BMW premium audio interior, it would either be Bowers and Wilkins or Harman Kardon. Now on the door card here, we have the same cockpit leather right here with the white stitching. There is some gloss black besides that. We have our window controls right here, as well as our mirror controls. So left and right for the mirror controls. This button right here is gonna fold the mirrors in. So when you're leaving the car, you can fold the mirrors in uh, for a better look here. We talked about the trunk button right here. There's a second speaker. And then over here, we have this interesting looking door handle. It kind of reminds me of some older Lamborghinis. You'll pull right here to open that door. And we do also have a lock and unlock button for the front two doors here. Now these seats inside the Super over here, you can see on the very top, they have this thing that would almost kind of resemble uh, a little pass through for a racing harness. However, these actually don't go anywhere. Uh, we have, like we talked about, that red and white stitching, leather on the side bolsters, and then we have Alcantara with these red dots and white stitching right here on the inside. So even the bottom portion right here is Alcantara. I really wish that this seat had like a little extension right here for your thighs, but it doesn't. We only have memory seats and then we have the forward and back adjustment, recline and lumbar support. Sitting inside the Supra now, I actually really like these seats. Uh, they're not side bolstered too aggressively, so it doesn't feel like you're sitting in a track car, uh, but they do hug your body so you can definitely, you know, feel like you're in a sports car. I have heard a lot of people complain about the steering wheel in the Supras, saying that they're too thin. And honestly, now that I'm feeling the steering wheel here and kind of comparing them to previous cars that I've owned, I would say so myself also that the steering wheel is a little bit too thin for my liking. Some people actually don't like holding a uh, big, thick steering wheel, but I honestly do. It just makes the car feel a little bit more sportier. So if something that you're looking for is a big, thick steering wheel, uh, this may not be the car for you. To the left of the steering wheel, we have our light controls. So you can see right now we have them set to automatic, but we can actually turn them off if we don't want that, or we can adjust our parking lights. Over right here, we have the brightness for the center display, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. And then just right here behind the steering wheel, we have our turn signal indicator, which has a couple of functions. Uh, mainly BMWs have this little button right here, the BC. This is actually gonna change what is gonna be shown on the center display, which we're gonna go over in a moment. We also have paddle shifters right here behind the wheel. This is that eight speed automatic transmission. On the right side right here behind the steering wheel, we also have our wiper controls and our push button start is actually also behind the wheel, which is kind of interesting because a lot of BMWs have lately been shifting to putting the start button actually right here beside the shifter. And we have an eight inch screen right here. It is not touch screen. Uh, the BMWs don't really like to do touch screen on the interiors. Uh, this does have a wireless Apple CarPlay, but no Android Auto, which it really disappoints me that this car does not have Android Auto, but there are some aftermarket solutions for that. Just below that, you can see we have some vents here. We have our emergency lights. Now below all that, we have the old school dial right here for the volume and our buttons for our presets. This right here is one of my favorite little BMW touches that I'm so glad that they still do. Um, I'm a huge BMW and Toyota enthusiast, so this car honestly gets me really excited because it's like the best of both worlds for me. Not really much interesting to go over with the HVAC controls. We do have dual zone and heated seats for both driver and passenger sides. Uh, however, below the HVAC controls, we actually have a wireless phone charger right over here. So you can slide your phone under this little tray. We have a USB right over here, as well as a 12 volt power adapter here. All right, we've got our BMW style shifter here. So we're gonna go ahead and push right here for park. Uh, if we wanna go into reverse or drive, we're gonna have to push the unlock button right here and then go ahead and put it up or down wherever we wanna go to reverse, neutral, or drive. We also have a manual mode, which I'm gonna to have to probably turn on the car to use. And then we do have our iDrive controls right over here, which again, I'm a really big fan of, but that's just because I'm used to driving BMWs. Uh, I really like the iDrive controls and everything. Although I do wish that the screen 
was updated to BMW's larger 12-inch screen now. Uh, when the Toyota Supra first came out in 2020, uh, the standard screen size was 6 inches, which was actually even smaller than this. Uh, personally, by today's standards, this screen is starting to get a little bit small uh, at 8 inches. We're seeing a lot of manufacturers come out with, you know, 12-inch, 14-inch screens, uh, and I just sort of wish that this maybe became the base and some of the other higher-end Supras had the 12-inch screen that BMW uses. So pressing right here, you can turn off the automatic stop start. Uh, by keeping this on, you're gonna have the car turn off when you come to a stop. You can turn that little feature off right here. We have our sport mode button, which makes the car a little bit louder, a little bit more responsive. And then we have a couple of our safety system buttons right here. Now below all that, we have two cup holders here and a little storage pocket behind the cup holders. This center armrest does not open up. There's no way you know, to open this and get a little center console here. There is no center console. All you get is this little storage area right over here. Let's enter in now from the passenger side. You can see on the door card over here, we have the same controls, lock, unlock. We have that same door handle open right here our window over here for the passenger seat, as well as those two JBL speakers. This car has JBL speakers all around it. So if you have something right here in the passenger seat, you can get it to stay using this net. We do also have a standard size glove box right here with some manuals for, you can see, GR Supra. So I just looked through the manuals that came with the car and I'm really disappointed that they didn't number these cars. It would be really nice to know, you know, at least by the VIN number, it would be really nice to know which one of the 600 that you actually got on the launch edition Supras. If you guys remembered, I talked about the launch edition Supras. They actually had them right over here in carbon fiber. They told you exactly which number of the 1500 that you got. And of course we have power seats right here for the passenger as well. All right, let's talk about the center display here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the car first so you guys can see what the startup animation looks like and what the gauges look like naturally. Here we go, let's turn it on. All right, now let's go ahead and turn on the sport mode and see how the display changes. So you can see when we turn on sport mode, the gauges get a little bit more red and we get a different red line little area. This car you can see has 15 miles on the odometer, brand new car. All right, and you can see on the screen right here, we have the latest version of uh, BMW's iDrive system. So we have navigation right here. I can push menu to go back. Let me show you guys what the reverse camera looks like over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the unlock button and put the shifter up. You can see the reverse camera is gonna come on. We have these like 3D blocks that'll show you exactly how far you are from something. And same goes for the parking sensors around the car. They're gonna show you uh, how far you are away from the objects that are around you. I also really love this camera. It's extremely responsive, especially with these guidelines. They're gonna show you exactly where you're gonna go. This is night and day to the Toyota quality of the rear view cameras. Another interesting thing is that even if we go ahead and put the car into drive now, you can see the car is in D for drive. The rear view camera is gonna stay on until you actually accelerate to five, 10 miles an hour so that you can actually see what's behind you as you accelerate. And another really cool thing about the BMWs and the BMW system here with iDrive is that now that I've turned off the car, you can see that I can still listen to music. I can still uh, have my screen turned on. So sometimes, you know, you turn off the car and you're not actually gonna hop out for another minute or two. You can actually have your music still playing until you hop out, that's when everything is gonna turn off. Now by just pushing the start button without actually turning on the car, you can see we have a little welcome screen right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the controller for iDrive right here uh, to press okay and get into the system here. You can see that there's almost nothing on this screen that would make you think that you're sitting in a Toyota. Now let's go over some things above the screen. You can see on the mirror right here, we have three buttons where you can sync up your garage remotes so that when you come home, you just push on one and your garage will open up. We have our light switches right here so I can turn them on and turn them off. And we also have a SOS button. Now the interesting thing about this SOS button is that like most other Toyotas and BMWs, you actually have to hook it up to your phone and connect it with the app. However, this Toyota Supra SOS system does not actually work with the Toyota app, nor does it work with the BMW app. You have to get a separate app called Supra Connect in order to set up the emergency SOS and connected services on your Supra. If you made it to the end of this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, I'm honestly shocked that you sat through over 25 minutes of a crazy uh, Supra enthusiast talking all about the ins and outs of this car. However, I really wanted to make this video because there's not much out there about the A91 CF Supra on YouTube yet. 
Uh, maybe it's just because the car just came out, but I only see Toyota's own personal video is out there on the A91CF. That being said, they did only make 600 of these cars, so I don't imagine a lot of you guys will be able to get a chance to actually see one of these in person. So I wanted to make a slightly more detailed video on this car. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you all next time.